God's borders hate you because he knows that we can weaken this continent by giving them stupid rules. One of it, close your borders. I've talked about hunger that has killed 40 million Africans. No country ever locked their borders because of this disease. But it has killed 40 million people. The question is, why didn't we close our borders? And why are we closing borders today of COVID-19 when only, it all, all in all, not even half a million have died? Why closing borders? Why devastating the economy? Fellow Africans, I call upon you all, governments, technocrats, those of you who say you are educated but you cannot make a will, a more. <laughs> you cannot make a wheelbarrow. I call upon you to start thinking. To start thinking and realize that intelligence, intelligence has been in Africa all before education came. Intelligence has been with us. We are the credo of mankind. Meaning that by being credo of mankind, we have all the nine units of education. We are eager, we are disciplined, we are unified, we are careful, we have ability, we got tendons, we have intelligence, and we are obedient, and we are neat. That's education to me. But if they tell you that, no, it has to be wasted. And today, I've seen many African countries sending their children to China. When they reach there, they tell them that here, our curriculum is in Mandarin. It's either you learn Mandarin or go back to Africa. And our governments keep on pumping money for a special subject to learn Mandarin. When we come offset, when we offset, come back to Africa, a Chinese will come in and you will not learn our language in Africa. Not Zulu, not Tswana, not Herero, not Vambo, not Damala, not Susutu, not Tonga, not Lozi. Not Chewa, not Nyanja, not Swahili. But he is going to tell you that you learn our language. From today, perhaps this must end because Africa is cradle of mankind. When a foreigner comes from outside Africa to invest or to come and live with us, he must learn to speak Sutu, he must learn to speak Swahili, he must learn to speak Zulu. He must learn to speak Tswana, he must learn to speak Damala, he must learn to speak Herero, he must learn to speak Eibo, he must learn to speak Yoruba, he must learn to speak Swahili, Mandingo. If not, let them go. Because I want to challenge you. With what I have preached today, I even see myself extending my brain above that I was stupid when I was thinking before, but now I'm not stupid anymore. I can think deeper. I can change my life, I can change Africa, I can change everything that is surrounding me. Because Africa is a cradle of mankind, and Africa has done a lot. <clears throat> I will say something here in my closing. Nowadays, we are, we are limiting our lecture into 40 minutes or 45, because there's a lot that people have to do. So. I am on 39 minutes. I've got five minutes to go. Fellow Africans, the perception that we have that each and everything that comes from outside is what is needed, we are wrong. We are making this continent to remain a last. We are making this continent to remain like a museum because all these people that are coming from outside to Africa, first of all, they have got interest in Africa. Now, there will never be a person that is interested in Africa and never be interested by an Africa, and you never be interested in an African. I repeat that. It's not my language English, but I want you to understand. I am saying there is no way a European will be interested with African resources. There's no way an American will be interested with an Af African resource. There's no way a Chinese will be interested with our resources in Africa, but never get the same interest on me, an African, the owner of the resources. If he does that, he is not a friend. Let him go back. 
Let him go back because he's not a friend. If you are a friend, you should love me and love my resource. Love my continent and love me too. If you don't love me and you love my resource, you are a thief. You came to steal. And I will tell you what is happening in DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. Congo is in the Democratic Republic are living like slaves. They are dying like locusts sprayed with poison. And you know what? Somebody from outside is mining Colombo Tantalite. Somebody from outside Africa is mining cobalt. Somebody from somewhere outside Africa is taking diamonds. And you know, for you to believe that they don't love you as an African. They love the diamonds. They bring guns and say, you, this tribe and this tribe, fight. Because you can't be ruled by this one. You cannot be ruled by this one. Here are the guns. When you are busy killing each other, they are busy exploiting your minerals here. And that's the life that Western world, Eastern world is doing. I will reveal something about my country here. Malawi has two precious metals, ruby and sapphire. I'm feeling pain to say this because ruby is expensive more than diamond. That is mine in Botswana, that is mine in Lesotho. Very expensive per carat. Today, the government do not even know that we have these minerals in our country. But foreigners are mining it. I have a data report that says from 2007 to 2017, Ruby and Sapphire has sold outside Malawi 27 billion US dollars of these resources. And all this money is in the Eastern world, Middle East. Yet, my country, today as I speak to you, they don't have mask to cover from this COVID-19 don't have ventilator machines that could make a patient of COVID to survive. Schools are learning under the tree as if the leaves of a tree is a roof. 27 billion has just disappeared. Thanks to the new government, you need to get deep into this and take all the couplets to book. Because this will not free Africa if we do not follow what happened. Why is it happening like this? And who did this? There are Africans that are stupid. They don't care about their fellow African. They care if they are attached to the Western world. They are used like a pipe where the resources are guiding inside them through to the Western world, through to the Eastern world, through to the Northern world. Such Africans must not be allowed in any government in Africa because they are conduits of destruction of this continent. Malawi is one example. DRC is another example. And there are many countries, as I speak here, many of you that are listening are ashamed to say, we are part of them, let him not mention about us. I will not mention you. But it's important that Africa rise up today. Many other countries that say they are poorest, they are not. For example, Malawi is the poorest continent in the, uh, country in the world. Number six, in a number of 146 or 150 countries, Malawi is number six, being the poorest. But I'll tell you, the resource that I'm talking to you here, apart from Palladium, we are talking about Ruby and Safar, 27 billion US dollars, not Kwaja, not Rans, no shillings, but U.S. dollars has just disappeared, making Eastern world of Middle East the richest place. Now, I am ashamed by you leaders that when you want to have honeymoon with your wives, when you want to have holidays, you go to such countries. Do you know that those cities that you are sleeping, those cities that you are enjoying were built by the resources of your continent? Do you realize that? And are you happy? You don't need to. Because if you were leaders, you could say, 
all the resources that Africa is producing, let it build the tabernacle of Africa. We can manage that. We have all the resources. We can do better. We have all the resources. One thing, and one thing alone, that devastates us. We are not united. We listen from the people that brought education, that our land, men and women, they know about theories. They cannot sit down. Mix manganese, mix gold, mix iron into something. They can't. Perhaps they are direct, that's why they are directors of companies. If you are a director of a company, you are a worker. Don't be proud. If you are chief executive officer, you are a worker. Don't be proud. A proud person is the one who says, I am the owner of this company. <coughs> I read a book, Napoleon Hill, who said something about Hudson Ford. Is it Hudson Ford? Yeah, or Henry Ford. The owner of Ford cars. The owner of Ford cars never went to school. But he told his engineers that I want a straight engine, 10 valve or 10 cylinder, but should be straight. The engineer said, you didn't go to school, you don't know. He said, I own this company. If this company is mine, you engineers, you have to work out a straight engine of 10 cylinders. The engineers worked and fell. They come back to, Hudson, to Henry Ford. Henry Ford said, I have the idea and I see what I'm imagining. And if you can remember, I said, whatever you imagine can happen. And he gave them an idea, Henry Ford, giving the engineers who went to school, and they managed to make a...